Hi, I'm Shuey, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the crispiest chicken sandwich. Or burger, I don't care what you wanna call it. This is gonna use my Dorito coating to give the chicken the crunch it needs, but I have tweaked this up a bit. So sit back, grab a drink, and let's get into it. Now, to make crispy chicken sandwiches, we're obviously gonna need some chicken. And I'll be using skinless chicken thighs today, mainly because the dark meat tends to be juicier and it also has more flavor than the white meat. Now, I will trim them up a little bit, just shaping them, just so they fit into the buns that I brought. Now, don't throw out what we've trimmed off, just put them into a Ziploc bag and you can freeze that for later use. Now, while you're here, you might as well give the video a like just down there. Cheers. We can now pop these back into the fridge until we're ready to coat them. Now, Doritos are bringing the crunch to this party. Throw them into a blender or food processor and make these chips little crumbs. Now to add some spice. I just recommend using your favorite chicken rub. Mine's four monkeys. So for every bag of Doritos that you put in, put in two tablespoons of your rub and mix thoroughly. Now, I know you're starting to think this is way too easy. So try balancing a beer can on your head. Time to make some sauce. And being chicken, I'm going with a mayonnaise-based one. Now, I'll use a third of a cup of Kewpie mayo. That's Japanese mayo, for those that don't know. Then I'll add a tablespoon of hot sauce. You can use your favorite one. I'm using this limited edition 3AM taco yellow ghost pepper sauce. Mix that up and we're good to go. It's now time for some flower power. Not the smelly type, the white type. Not that sort of white stuff. Add one cup of flour into a bowl. Now to mix it up and give it a good punch, let's add some cayenne, garlic, onion, and sweet paprika. Give this a good mix and push it aside. Now, we need to make your thighs sticky. Stop looking at me like that. I mean we need some eggs to help that crunchy coating stick to our chicken thighs. Four of them to be precise. Yes, I did some math. Three and a half just didn't cut it. Whisk them up and feel like you're a chef because whisking is hard. Now, I suggest setting up a coating station for the chicken. It not only makes things easier, but a lot less messy. The chicken goes into the flour mix. Mix them around thoroughly and make sure every piece is fully covered. Now, shake off the excess flour and put the thighs onto a plate. Double checking that they're all fully coated. If not, put them back in and shake them off. And now, time to use some double hand action to get those thighs sticky for the finish. Now using one hand, put one thigh into the egg wash and just flip it over with the same hand, making sure it's all fully covered. Then, you wanna drain off the excess and place that one into the Dorito mix. Place another thigh into the egg wash, flip it over. Use your other hand, cover the thigh, fully cover it, and with a bit of pressure, press down. And that is gonna help those Doritos to stick to the outside. And then just place onto a greaseproof paper lined tray. Once the thighs are all coated, place these in the fridge until the barbecue's ready. I need to be cooking at a high indirect heat today, so I'm gonna utilize a 57 centimeter Weber kettle and a kettle cone. That way I'll get temps over 240 degrees Celsius. I'll start by three quarter filling a chimney starter with briquettes. And when they're fully ashed over, I'm gonna put the kettle cone into place and dump them inside. You do not need to fully load up the kettle cone, otherwise you're gonna choke that airflow and you're not gonna get those high temps you see other people getting. Just put the lid on, open all the vents, and allow that to warm up for 10 minutes. It is time to get our chicken on the grill. Place the thighs on the outermost part of the grill. This is where that high indirect heat is getting forced. Just place the lid back on, again, making sure all those vents are wide open. Have you subscribed to the channel yet? Just down there, just hit that button. And while you're there, you might as well hit that bell button as well. 
That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Cheers. We are cooking using a high indirect heat today. And our cook is only gonna take 30 minutes. Or for those of you who like to use my beer timer, you're looking at a one beer cook. If you didn't know, the Weber lid vent creates a hot spot because that's where all of that hot air is getting forced out. So I recommend turning the lid a third of the way every 10 minutes during the cook. This will ensure an even cook. Now I've just checked the thighs and they are reading over 74 degrees Celsius. So that means the chicken is done. It is time to get them off the grill and onto a wire rack. Now we can add the buns to the grill just to toast them up a little bit. They'll only take a couple of minutes. So once the buns are lightly toasted, just add a little bit of that hot sauce Kewpie mayo to both the top and the bottom bun. Add some sliced lettuce to the bottom bun and top with a crispy chicken thigh. Give that a hat and enjoy a super crunchy chicken sandwich or burger. Cheers for watching.